Hello scientists, this is Miss R and we're going to talk about lab 1.05 today. This is the ball bounce lab. Your lab should look something like this and it should have these pictures of graphs on it. Make sure you're using the uh, lab that you have downloaded or that you were sent in a k-mail. We're looking at the relationship between the drop height and the bounce height. The drop height is the height at which we drop the ball and the bounce height is how high the ball bounces and I'll show you what that means in just a minute when we go to the lab here. We're looking at possible relationships between that drop height and that bounce height and there are several different graphs that are within your lab there's graph 1, graph 2, graph 3, where it's kind of a straight line across the bottom here, 4, 5, and 6. And these different graphs have different shapes that show the relationship between the drop height and the bounce height. For instance, if this graph shows that if you drop a ball, say, from 40 or 50 centimeters, it's going to bounce to about the same height. So this graph says drop height and bounce height are the same. Whereas if we look at this graph, the drop height is bigger than the bounce height. The drop height is way is over here, and the bounce height is about right here for this point, at about if you say drop it from like 60 centimeters. So um, we are, our job in this lab is to first make a hypothesis about what we think the relationship between drop height and bounce height is. And there are a bunch of different graphs that show different relationships. Graph 3 kind of shows there isn't going to be a bounce height. Graph 4 shows there really it doesn't matter, there isn't any predictable relationship between the two. Graph 5 says that you can drop it from higher and higher, but eventually it's going to level off. But it's going to be kind of the same, and then it's going to level off. And graph 6 says the bounce height is going to increase for uh, increase exponentially. And in other words, the, the higher you drop it, the higher the proportion of the bounce is going to be. So those are some relationships that we might choose to be part of our hypothesis. And we're going to uh, use what we know about sports balls to help make that hypothesis. Um, let's go to the actual lab here. So this is the physical science page here. You can see this says physical science up here. You should have downloaded the lab from doc sharing here on the bar. It's lab 1.05. You can just click on doc sharing and click on this and that'll download your lab sheet. But to get to the actual lab, we can go to unit one. I clicked on the unit one bar. I'm going to go down to the lab here, 1.05. Click on the lab. I'll learn some fabulous things about uh, the scientific method. And I can click through these screens. I'm going in the lower left hand, lower right hand corner here, and I get to the drop and bounce area. So I'm going to click on this. I click OK, and I'll refocus this. Here is the actual lab, and you should view the tutorial, but I'm going to go straight in to begin the lab. I'm not going to actually collect data right now. I'm just going to show you how this works so you have a better idea of what we're talking about when we're trying to make a hypothesis. So right now I can grab the golf ball. That's one of the balls we're going to drop. And I can drop it up here from 100 centimeters. That's my drop height. That's my independent variable, what I choose before the experiment even starts. And then I look, how high does that ball bounce the first time? So this is drop height, what I choose from the beginning of the experiment. That's the independent variable. And then bounce height, it's bouncing to about right here. That's the dependent variable. 
So we're looking for the relationship between the drop height, the independent variable, and the bounce height, the dependent variable. So here's the lab report that you have downloaded or gotten from your K-mail. And here are those graphs we've been talking about, right, in your lab report. So our first question is going to ask you, predict how your graph will show a relationship between drop height and bounce height. That's the independent variable on the x-axis and the dependent variable here on the y-axis. Refer to the sample graphs in the laboratory guide to help you or right here on your lab. So, so for the golf ball, think about what you know about golf balls. You can say, I think the graph of the golf ball bouncing from increasing heights will look like graph number one, two, three, four, five, or six. So it's up to you to make your hypothesis here and fill in this number. The trend that this graph is showing, well, you have to explain what that trend is. For example, graph number one, if we go back up here, is showing that drop height and bounce height are going to be about equal. Um, if you choose number graph number one. If you choose graph number two, it shows that drop height right here is going to be a little bit bigger than bounce height. We're going to assume these scales are the same on this graph. Graph number three, of course, would be like the ball doesn't bounce. So explain, pick a number and then explain what that graph is showing. Explain what the ball is actually doing when it bounces. So that's your hypothesis. It's up to you to make a hypothesis. And it's up to you to tell me which observations, experiences, or lesson materials help you form your hypothesis, because it's your hypothesis. Do you play golf? Do you play with a lot of, like, a plastic wiffle ball? Um, have you uh, used those fun little rubber super balls and bounced them around your house? Um, what do you know about bounciness of balls? Um, that's going to help you make a good hypothesis. So write that down for number two. And number three, we're going to actually go and I will do the golf ball with you. And then you can go and work in the lab for the, and collect data for the plastic ball, the rubber ball, and the clay ball. So right now, let's go back to the virtual lab and we'll collect some data for the golf ball. So we're back in the lab here, and our first drop height is 20. So I'm going to take the bottom of the golf ball up to 20 here on the ruler, and I'm going to drop it. And then I'm going to see about where did that ball bounce back up to. I'm going to do it a couple of times so that you can get a good number. Keep an eye right around 10, maybe a little bit above 10. I think it's about 12 centimeters, so write that down. For 20 centimeter drop height, the bounce height is 12 centimeters. I'm going to try 40 here. So it looks like I'd keep an eye on right around here at 20. Remember my, dr my drop height is 40 and my bounce height is going to be right around in here. It looks like about 23 to me. So we had, when we go back to the lab sheet, so for a drop height of 20 here, we had a bounce height of 12 centimeters. And centimeters is the unit. So if, if um, the lab sheet is talking about units, centimeters is the units we measure in. 12 watt. And then when we dropped it from 40 centimeters, it was 23. Now we need to go drop it from 60, 80, and 100 centimeters and get those bounce heights before we can make a graph. Okay, we're back in the lab and we need to do a 60 centimeter drop height. Let's give that a shot. Remember, we're looking at where the bottom of the ball is when, when it bounces. I'm thinking it's right around 30 something, so keep your eye on 30 something. Let's 
Let's do it one more time. It almost looked like about 39 to me. So for a drop height of 60 centimeters, the bounce height was right around 39. Let's see what it is for 80 centimeters, a drop height of 80. It's just about 50, I think. Let's keep our eye on 50. I think it's about 51. Fifty-one, maybe fifty-two. You can write down whatever you like. Let's do it for a drop height of one hundred centimeters. So I think it's coming up to about seventy. Let's look again for a drop height of one hundred. Oh nope, the bottom of the ball is coming up to maybe around here, around sixty-six. Yeah, maybe 66, 67 for 100. So we go back to our data table. We just had 66 for 100. We had about 70. And this was 39, if I remember correctly. If you have slightly different numbers, that is OK. They're your observations. Um, let's go graph this first set of data. Your graph is going to have um, a line for each type of ball. So you're going to have a, a line for the golf ball, a line for the plastic ball, a line for the rubber ball, and a line for the clay ball. So four different lines. We're going to go do the first line right now. So let's go down to the graph. And so for a drop height of 20, this is, remember, our independent variable, our drop height. We chose 20 at the beginning of the experiment, so it was independent of what happened at the end of the, the experiment. And we know that the bounce height was about 12. It's about right here. Now, there are a lot of ways to do graphing. Um, you can totally do it in Excel if you want to put it all in an Excel spreadsheet. That is just fine. I have a tutorial on that I'll post. Um, if you want to go insert, it's a little bit different on a PC. I'm working on a Mac. But um, you choose insert here on a PC. And then you look for the shape. And you can choose a circle. I'll choose a circle. It's got not going to work very well here on a Mac to put a circle, try to put a shape on top of the graph, but we'll make this shape a little bit smaller. This will work much better on a PC. And we'll put our point right there. A lot of people like to print this off. They like to do the graph by hand, and then they like to scan it or take a photo of it uh, with their phone or their camera or whatever they've got handy. That works. OK, so I've done the initial graph. I put in the points. I went into the scribble feature under the lines and used that. That seemed to work a little bit better than the circles on my Mac here. And I have some points. So for 20, the drop height was 12. For 40, it was about 23. For 60, it was about 39. For 80, I wrote it down incorrectly. It, was, it wasn't 70, it was about 50. And then it was about 66 for 100. So now we want to draw a trend line. I'm going to go up to the Shapes menu. I'm going to grab a line. And I'm going to draw a trend line. Now, you don't have to draw a trend line for the golf ball, but I'm just showing you what a trend line is. And notice my trend line here, it goes through, it tries to touch as many points as you can, 
as it can. It's not above most of the points or below most of the points. It tries to go through as many points as possible. Some might 